Good evening, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Claude Johnson, and I am the Vice President for Development and Communications at WNET here in New York. And as you know, WNET is the PBS station for 13, WLIW, and NJTV. Now, I know you all have waited long enough, so I'm not going to say a lot of stuff. But I want to just thank a couple of very important people here tonight. Um, I want to first thank ITVS for really, really helping to bring this film to us this evening, to bring it to PBS and to Channel 13. It will air in its entirety on, at 9 p.m. on, uh, oh, I forgot the date, uh, on, June, on, on February 16th at 9 p.m. It will, it will air in its entirety. This evening, we're going to look at a preview, um, and we're going to have the benefit of a wonderful conversation uh, with Elizabeth Sackler, who is the chair of the board of the uh, Brooklyn Museum and a very good friend of WNET, a very close friend of our filmmaker uh, Stanley Nelson. I just want to say a couple things about Stanley. Um, he has been a tremendous, tremendous partner for PBS. Uh, some of the great documentaries that he has produced and that have aired on PBS include Freedom Riders. Yeah. He also um, uh, produced a film on Sweet Honey in the Rock, uh, Voices Rise, that was part of our, our, our regular series on American Masters. But a little bit about Black Panthers this evening. Um, Black Panthers, Vanguard of the Revolution is a really compelling and very important documentary, and that's why we have so many different people here this evening to see it and to hear from Mr. Nelson. Um, it is one of, if not the very first films to take this deep dive and critical look at, to understand the role of the Black Panthers, not only in terms of its contribution to the communities where it was, where they were very, very present, but to the American fabric. And it's a really important statement, and I think you're going to enjoy the conversation that will follow. Um, I would like to also just tell you about some of the recent awards the film has and acknowledgments that the film has enjoyed. Uh, just last night, the NAACP Image Award named it the best documentary, uh, so that's worth a hand. And for those of you who do read the New York Times, you may recall that uh, A.L. Scott named it one of the top 15 films of the year. That's both. Uh, commercial films and documentaries. So it is really well recognized. Um, I think at this point, it's going to really be my pleasure to introduce our filmmaker. I'd like to introduce Mr. Stanley Nelson. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm not going to be long, so we're going to watch the film. Um, the, uh, I think the big thing that, that I want to make sure we understand is that the film will be broadcast on PBS on February 16th at, at 9 o'clock. And that's not only in New York, that's all over the country, everywhere. Please let people know that's kind of the advertising that we've got. Um, one thing about PBS is it doesn't have a, a ton of money for advertising, although it has some. But really, um, it, it's really through word of mouth. And that really works. And I think it's really important that we understand that we do have power. Um, we premiered this film. Uh, we had a theatrical run. We premiered the film at Film Forum at the beginning of September, Labor Day weekend. And through the power that we have of people just talking about it, each other, we were held over for eight weeks. Um, and we then went around the country and were held over everywhere we went. So really, let people know, you know, I, I think it's really important that, that, that we use the power that we have. Let people know, um, again, it's going to be um, on February 16th all over the country. Um, I'll be back afterwards to, to talk a little bit about the film and then answer uh, any questions that anybody has. Um, I, I want to just let everybody know that this is the shortened version of the film. So you were not gonna, you're not going to see the whole film tonight, although you can see a lot of it, but not the whole thing. Um, so there is more to see on February 16th. But I look forward to the discussion after and to your questions. 
And uh, it's been a wild ride with this film. I hope you like it, uh, The Black Panther's Vanguard of the Revolution. Thank you all. Um, before we start, I just want to say that, that the film will be on PBS once again, February 16th, um, all over on Independent Lens uh, at 9 o'clock. And again, that's all over the country. And I just want to thank a, a pen, a Independent Lens and uh, PBS who have really uh, backed this film. You know, when we were making the film, we didn't know, <laughs> we didn't know what they were going to think of it, but they've really been solidly behind the film. And I just want to thank Independent Lens and uh, PBS for, for their support. And I want to take you guys' pictures soon. Go to that. So. As I'm looking out, I see mostly people who probably weren't alive when all of this was going on, except for a few. Is that right? Is that right? The more things change, the more they stay the same, and the worse they get. <laughs> Let's hope they get better. Well, you're helping make it better. And I want to know, first of all, um, Stanley and I went to high school together, so we've known each other since then. <laughs> That's why I get to sit up here with Stanley. And as chair of the Brooklyn Museum and founder of the Sackler Center, uh, it really is great for the Brooklyn Museum to have Stanley here and to have Vanguard of the Revolution. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of this museum and that everything that this museum stands for and all of the programming we do, so this is really a pleasure. Now, I want to know uh, when you started the film, because right now is a wonderful time for this film to be out. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about when you started, sure. how long it took? Sure. I started the film uh, seven years ago. I guess it's eight years ago now. Wow. Uh, eight years ago. Um, it took about seven years to make the film. Um, a lot of that time was trying to raise money. Um, but, uh, I, you know, that was way before kind of we're in the moment that we're, that we're in now. It was before, you know, Ferguson and, uh, you know, everywhere else. Um, but I, I thought at that point, eight years ago that this was uh, a story that needed to be told. It was a relevant story. The things that the Panthers were fighting for still, you know, hadn't been realized. And it was a story that, that, that most people misunderstood or didn't know at all. So um, little did I know that, you know, what's happened in the last two years would kind of happen and play out and the story would even be more relevant than it was when I started. How, what, what do you think that the film that you now have made, and now um, that we are post-Ferguson, as it were, what impact do you think this will have as you've been seeing it screen and you feel everybody's responses to it and how visceral this is? Well, you know, I, I hope that the film will be inspiring. We, um, I finished the film, we finished the film a year ago. And uh, we premiered just like exactly a year ago at Sundance Film Festival, and then did festivals, and then had a theatrical release all around the country. And one of the things that, that we've done a lot of is pair people with the movement today, Black Lives Matter, and, 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 and other pieces of the movement with Panthers, and had them kind of respond and talk after the film. You know, it, it's really interesting because a couple of years ago, I, I made a film, uh, Freedom Riders, and then I made a film, Freedom Summer. And, and the talk, you know, at, at, the, uh, at the screenings was always, you know, well, what about these young people today? They're so apathetic, you know, oh God. And, uh, you know, now nobody says that, never. You know, we've scre I've screened this film a hundred times. Not one time has anybody gotten up and talked about apathetic young people, you know, and so well. that's... Yeah. And that's, it's, that's a change that we've seen in the last couple of years, you know, I mean, you know, I, and I'm not saying that I don't, I, my, I don't think I, young people were apathetic two ben. years ago, right. but I think that, you know, I think that they're also, you know, part of, part of a movement is that, you know, it's something that you can join, you know, everybody's not a leader, but part of what, what's great about a movement, it, it, you know, it just needs bodies and, and their bodies there now. How do you think uh, young people are going to respond to this, um, given what's going on in our country today? Well, I hope it's inspiring. You know, I mean, one of the best things that, that was said in any of the screenings was Emery Douglas, the, the, the Panther artist who we talk about in the film, you know, said that, uh, you know, 
we're not looking for people to use the Panthers as a model, but hopefully they can use the Panther story as, as inspiration. You know, um, there's, a, there's a great picture that we use in the beginning of the film where, you know, Huey and Bobby and Big Man and little Bobby Hutton and the Forte brothers are standing out there in the yard and, and, and Big Man is talking about the beginning of the Panthers. Well, those six people were the only Panthers that existed at that time. You know, it started with six guys saying, you know, we've got to do something about the police in Oakland. That's how it started. And here we are, 50 years later, talking about them. So I think, you know, hopefully that'll be an inspiration that, that, that uh, you know, we can make change. And we do have the power to make change. And, uh, you know, we just got to do it because nobody's going to do it for us. I would like to open up the mics because I have a feeling there are a lot of questions here. So if you have questions, please uh, line up behind the mics while, while we're talking. Um, police violence today, that's evident. Mm -hmm. um, when I see this movie, and I've seen it now a couple of times, uh, I get very angry. I get very upset. How can we begin to work together to combat what's going on. Have you learned anything from putting this film together and all of the interviews you had and everything that you have heard and learned about what took place then? What can we get out of that? You know, I mean, I, I think it's about organizing. I think it's about, it's about the, the organization that, that the Panthers had. It's about organizing. It's about people working together, talking to each other. I mean, I think that was one of the important things. You know, I, I saw the, this kind of weird thing happen. When, when we started screening the film uh, really heavily in, in the fall, you know, we did our theatrical release, there was a lot of talk you know, about, people were talking about, about racism, about police violence in this country. And then it, it, it was almost like the energy got sapped out because there's this crazy election that's going on. And all of a sudden, people started talking about these nuts who are running yeah. for, for, for president. And, 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 and that became the talk. And, and, and I think it's really important that we don't let that talk kind of um, you know, diffuse the, 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 you know, what, what's really important. And that's that, that, that people you know, talk about what's going on and, and organize. Would you like to ask a question? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, th I thought that the cops were, 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 were great. I mean, you know, that's what we wanted them to do. We wanted them to be cops. You know, I, I think that, that, that what, you know, um, we really went after, the, after finding uh, members of, of the police department who would talk to us, and we really pushed to do it. Um, I, I also, I, I should say, first I want uh, Nicole London, raise your hand. Nicole is the associate producer of the film. No, raise it high. No, no, yeah. Son, Nicole, is a social producer, and, and, and really worked hard, and we worked hard on finding the police. I think the, one of the things that, that happens when it takes seven years to make a film, you know, as a filmmaker, there's not too many good things that happen. You know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it's rough. But one of the good things that does happen is that you have time to look for people and go back and say, you know, have you changed your mind? What about now? So we really went after the cops because we thought that that, we, that that just gives it another layer. You know, I, I mean, if you had a stopwatch, the cops aren't in the film for that long. But, um, but everybody always asks, and you know, unfortunately, one of the one of the, the, the pieces in the film that you don't see is is the the, the L.A. shootout that that comes next in the film, which is the shootout at 41st and Central, which is just an incredible scene. So please, you need to uh, you need to see the whole film so you can see that scene because it's a uh, it's just amazing because um, uh, we have two of the people who are in the house. Uh, in the Panther headquarters who were shooting out and the cops who were shooting in and they're all talking about what they were doing. But also, it was one of the reasons why we cover that shootout is because it went on for six hours and the press got there and the press filmed it and you actually see, you know, the bullets flying and the cops being wounded and it's, uh, it, it's an amazing, it's an amazing scene. February 16th, yes, over here. Uh, Black women to be part of 
Yeah, I, I, I think part of it, you know, for me is the first film I, I made, it was uh, about Madam C.J. Walker, it's called Two Dollars and a Dream, about black women. Um, and I, I grew up in a family kind of with strong black women, and so, you know. You it, two great sisters. <laughs> yeah, and, it's so, and, and so it's part of, um, you know, um, what, you know, I, we think about, from, I think about from the beginning. But I also think one of the things that's really important is, is a lot of the producing team were women. And so that's really important. You know, when people talk about diversity, it's not that, you, that you're doing anybody a favor. You know, it's part of, you know, having women on the team. At one point, me and the editor, who's, who's another man, you know, we had kind of like lessened the, the, the whole section about women. And one of the women on the team was like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what about the women? <laughs> like, I missed that part. And, and uh, you know, and, and it took that um, for us to say, yeah, you're right. You know, we really want, want, want uh, that to be a piece of it. It's really interesting, too, to hear that the Panthers wanted to reverse the roles so that the women were carrying guns and the, and the men were, you know, um, yeah, I mean, the, you, up breakfast. Yeah, you know, I, I, there, there was there, there was there's so much I think that 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 you know happens in the Panthers that you know I think that once you start thinking about you know society and you move yourself you know from it and start looking at it then you start looking at the whole thing. Right. One of the things we don't talk about in the film because we just couldn't include it was Huey Newton uh, uh, issued a paper in, in support of uh, uh, homosexuals. And, and, and in solidarity with, with, with homosexuals. And we're talking about 1968, you know. Um, so, you know, there, there was a lot that, that the Panthers were, were doing and saying that was way ahead of its time. And I think it, it's important that uh, we well, talk about, about some about suppression, of it. I mean, any suppression right. whatsoever. Right. right, and once you start thinking about it, then you start thinking about, well, wait a minute, you know, women are being oppressed, you know, gays are being oppressed, and, and you know, it, it, it goes on from there. Yes. Um, yes, I also um, like to thank you for the film. I thought it was exceptionally well made. I mean, the candid um, discussions by the officers, um, the gender roles that were mentioned, and, and also the great interviews um, with people who are very old at this point. Um, it's a part of history. However, there was one major omission, and I'm not sure if it's also in the film, but it was very disturbing uh, to me. And I understand that film, there's nothing democratic about film. I know you have to have funding. And who gives funding to people who have money? And the omission that bothered me was the fact that um, the Black Panthers didn't think that we were going to have revolution by protesting or by guns. I mean, they were dedicated communists. They saw the Russian Revolution as their role model, and uh, one of the ways they made money was through selling Mao's Little Red Book. And I don't see any mention here uh, about communism, and I find that very, um, very disturbing. Oh well, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I do think that that we talk they talk about the fact uh, that capitalism wasn't going to work for 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 the lower class and black people in this country. I think I think that 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 we do talk about that a little bit in the film. I mean, you know, we could have put more emphasis on it. We could have put more emphasis on a lot of a lot. Of, I, I feel when it, whenever I see that that piece though, where they talk about the fact that they felt that capitalism wasn't going to work uh, for for black people. I feel really, I feel really good about it because you know um, uh, it's hard to to talk about those things without kind of going down a rabbit hole, and we couldn't do that in this film. I'm sorry, is that because of corporate funding? I'm sorry. Is that because of funding issues? It has nothing to do with funding at all. Okay. It has it has to do with um, you know every, very simply, and I don't want to go into this. Too much, but you know, to, to talk about communism and things like that, you have to define communism to an American public. That then now we're not talking about the Panthers anymore. We're talking about communism and defining communism, which is a, which wasn't the role of the film. So you know, we, we struggled to, to 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 kind of you know give it that nod that we did. I know, but it, it makes the film not historically accurate. Okay, we're going to have. So we can. I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'll be. I'll be around afterwards. If if you want to talk, I'd be glad. I'd be glad to talk more more about it. I, I really will. Afterwards. Thank you very much. Yes. 
But one of the things I, I should say, so, so people do understand that, that um, when you make this kind of film, the funders are not involved in any of the decisions at all. You know, they do not, nobody is looking over your shoulder, um, people who fund the film. You know, PBS, you know, I, I think by law can't even, you know, look at the film and make, and make comments. But they made no comments about, about the content at all. Well, it must be very hard to take that, this much information anyway and condense it into two hours. Well, that, I mean, I, I think that, that was one of the, the, central pro, the central difficulties of making this film. And also, you know, early on we decided that this film could be done without narration and so you know that's like you know you ever watch diving in the Olympics and they do degree of difficulty right. well that's like adds to the degree of difficulty when you say okay we're not gonna have narration but I think it also for an audience it, it makes the audience connection to the film very different because there's no like uh, you know voice with an English accent <laughs> Yes. All right, I'd like to thank you for making this story once again relevant in a time that is very much necessary. Um, but I'm, I'm, I was about five years old when most of this was going on, and I remember the history and the news that I, hit, I heard about it was more or less tainted towards you don't want to go there. But as I got older, you do your own research, and you see everybody should have been there. And I'd like to encourage the younger the youth to look into this story deeper and to see there is a solution to a lot of the problems I hear that, that we've gone through. And this was along the lines, but it got interfered by a lot of invisible hands, the government, FBI. And I wonder if instead of guns where we can't use now, if we can maybe use those cameras that everybody has in their phones as a form of uh, checking what the authorities are doing. I, well, guns are good if they're legal, but, but we, everybody needs to have them. But until we get that, you got that camera. You, you gotta, you could always put them on blast. And, um, okay, great. Yeah, I, I, th I think that, 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 that as the brother's saying, um, you know, cameras are being used and cameras have been really influential. If, if, if you notice, you know, I, I haven't seen it added up, but in so many of the incidents that have happened in the past two years, you know, the police have started to come out with a whole different version of what happened. And then somebody said, well, wait a minute, I've got video. Of, of, of what actually did happen. So it is, I think, changing, you know, how we're feeling. Um, you know, and, and I think it's, it's, it's for us, you know, as African Americans, it's, it's just validated what, what we knew was happening, you know, for years and years and years. I have one, more uh, one, one quick question. You know, how much of the film is documented that's been out there already and how much of it is new information? How much is new information? And I believe the cops' interviews, I guess, would be more or less new information. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I mean, I, I don't know how to answer that question. What's new? I mean, I think they, for it depends on how much you know. I think for most people, I would think for everybody here, there's a lot of new information in the film. You know, we've shown the film uh, to probably four or five hundred Panthers have seen the film. They always come to me and said, oh, I didn't know that, or where'd you get those pictures, or where'd you get that video? Um, you know, I think, I think the difference for, f between this film and anything that, that comes along is that we spent seven years, you know, collecting material, talking to people, trying to get the story right. Thank you. Yes. My question is that, um, I mean, during that time, they, of course, they had a very strong grassroots um, also campaign to, for their membership. You know, we didn't have a, they didn't, obviously, we, we didn't have a lot of civil, civil uh, liberties during that time. But, but now, and they, so that would make some young, gifted, and black, but now for a revolutionary uh, person to want to get involved, you know, the generation is young, don't give a fuck, and black. So the thing about it now is how do you, what, what type of weapons can someone who wants to be a revolutionary, wants to get involved and want to, you know, uplift the youth to want them to get involved themselves, what, what, are, what are some new methods that you can actually use to convince them to somehow get involved or just get involved in some capacity? I, th I, think, I think one thing that, that, that I should say, you know, before we go too far is I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a film. 
<laughs> you know. Um, so I just want to say that. I, I, th I think the, the thing is that, that, that there's a lot of groups who are working to make change. They're, they're there for people to join. They're there for people to work with, for people to volunteer. There's, you know, I think that, that there's books, you know, there's other films, and there's other things that you can do to, to kind of get a, a, a base in, in, in what's happening. And then, you know, just try to, try to, I think that the main thing for us to do, you know, I think the Panthers did, and when they, the film, again, you haven't seen the, 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 the end of the film, but one of the things that ends the film is, um, Jamal Joseph talks about, you know, um, an undying love for the people. That that was the guiding principle of the Black Panthers, was an undying love of the people. So I think you have to think about that, you know, okay? Thank Do it with love. Yes. Thank you so much again for um, the making the film. I really admire it. I'm an aspiring filmmaker myself. Um, so something that I really admired about your film was that you were able to stay focused on a, a narrative. And I know that you mentioned that it took you a long time to make the film, you know, I think you said seven years. And so I'm, I'm wondering in that process of making the film and, and discovering new information, some, some, some uh, putting together like a different narrative, how did you stay focused on the story that you wanted to tell and not get distracted by, by other topics? Topics or new things that you found out, you know, how did how do you stay on that that narrative? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's an interesting question. I think that 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 you know the film, if you if you broke it down, is a series of stories. You know, so it's the Fred Hampton story. You know, it's the Eldridge Cleaver story. It's it's uh, it's the uh, murder of little Bobby Hutton. You know, it's those stories, and we wanted each story to lead to something else. You know. So it's almost like if, 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 if the story is a tree, you know, we're trying to stay at the trunk, you know, and, and you're not trying to tell these, go off on this branch, it doesn't get you back to the, to the trunk, you know. Um, and then we didn't want stories to repeat. So again, I'm star sorry that you didn't see the LA shootout. There were lots of, lots of shootouts, but we said, okay, we're gonna use one shootout to represent um, you know, all the other shootouts, and we chose L.A. because, again, there was great, great footage. There were witnesses who were there um, to tell that story of the shootout. So I think it, it, it was, the idea was not to be distracted and go off on, on these tangents. You know, I mean, and there's tons of them. There's a lot of great stories, but we wanted each one to lead to the other or to reverberate later. You know, so as we talk about Eldridge Cleaver, Earlier, as you saw them talk about Eldridge Cleaver, where uh, Felipe Luciano says he's fucking insane, you know, and that, and that, you know, how could you have an organization without, uh, with Eldridge not being the leader? Well, that comes back to haunt them later on as Eldridge and, and Huey start to battle, you know, and so it, it, it resonates later. Thank you very much. We'll take these four questions and then we're going to have to start to wrap up. Yes, please. I am in awe of your ability to tell a story. I, first of all, I love the very beginning of the indie and the peeling away that how you all set this up, and I don't know if anybody other than me who is a storyteller picked this up, but that's exactly what you did with the way that you told the story, and that is to peel away different pieces. You touch the elephant, you touch the side, and there were different perspectives. This is my question to you. Government does not like truth when it is packaged in this way. <laughs> uh, what kind of preparation do you all have, PBS, given the culture that we are in today, and understanding that you were told to do this some time ago, and we are in a culture today that is more timely than ever for something like this for the masses, but more making the, the, the government even more unsettled. How prepared are you for what will come from the system from the release of this film? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I, you know, you know, I, I'm ready. Please, 
let, let everybody you know know. Tell everybody about the film. That's all I can say. We have a screening next week with the Congressional Black Caucus in D.C. They want to see it, so you know, here it is. I, I mean, I, I think, that, I, think I, I, I should say that when we were working on the film, you know, um, we had no idea what the acceptance of the film would be. You know, our, our, our joke in the edit, was, edit room was we're going to finish this film and then we're going to go for the congressional investigation and, and, and deal with it. But, you know, and, and we didn't know what PBS was going to say. You know, we, we, we had great, great, great trust of, of ITVS and Independent Lens because, you know, this is what they do. You know, they, they don't interfere. But we didn't know what PBS was going to say. And, and they've just been totally, I mean, they financed the, the theatrical release of the film. You know, they've been incredible uh, with, with the film. And, and so, you know, it's just, it, 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 it's, it's all good, you know. Um, we're, just, we're just getting it out there. And I think, I think that's really important. I think we move, you know, so the film has been stages. We, we premiered at Sundance a year ago. We did festivals. We did the theatrical. Now we're doing this community um, cinema and community engagement with, with, with Independent Lens and ITVS. And after that, you know, the, the film is out there after it airs. So the way PBS works is the day it airs, you know, at the end of the film when they say, oh, if you want to order this film, at that point, the film goes up for sale. And that anybody can buy it, anybody can show it, anybody can take it home and show it to their friends, and, and that's what we want them to do. You know, we want people to have this film, show it to their kids, show it, you know, you know, like one of, one of the, the executives from PBS, I remember she was, she was new, I won't, I won't name her name, but she was new, and we had a, a meeting over coffee because she was new, and I was like, well, you know, have you seen the film? And she said, yeah, I saw it four times. I showed it to my mom last night. <laughs> She's black. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I just, we, we just want people to see the film. Yes. Yes, again, thank you for the film. It was outstanding, well put together. Thank the you. pace was outstanding. I highly enjoyed it, and I'll just buy it by it. Thank My you. question is, with the power, influence that Fred Hampton has, or had at that time, how do you feel that the political and societal climate would be different today if he was not assassinated? Who knows? You know, I mean, that, that's a great question, but who knows? I mean, I, I think the thing, the thing that we tried to show in the film that it was that Fred Hampton was kind of, you know, people thought he was the one. He was a little bit different. He didn't have the same kind of baggage that, 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 that Eldridge has and that, as you haven't seen, that Huey has when he comes out of jail. So you didn't, that, that, that piece of the film you didn't see. But you know, that Fred Hampton was different. Also Fred Hampton had, had been working in the civil rights movement for years. You know, so he, he had this background. He was trying to unify all these different groups in Chicago. Um, you know, um, who knows? As the Panthers fall apart, you know, you, you want to hope that he might have been able to, to, to unite them or, or unite people in a different way. Um, but, you know, who knows? And the last two questions. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. I appreciate your film. Thanks. And um, one of my questions was, I, I, you, you brought about the element of the, the women in the Panther Party, but I was left wondering why Angela Davis wasn't involved. Did she... I haven't seen her really in the forefront of any of the movements lately. Mm -hmm. Is it that she denied it or you just decided not to go that route? We have two answers to it. First, I want to tell you that the Sackler Center First Awards this year are on June 2nd, and we are honoring Angela Davis. <laughs> and um, so uh, Angela was not a, a Black Panther. But I'll, I'll let you approach it. Yeah. So we'll be showing the film Free Angela and Other Political Prisoners um, at, during that uh, award ceremony here. Which is actually a, a great film. Um, yeah, you know, Angela Davis was not a member of the Black Panther Party. That's a, that's a question that we get, we've gotten at every single screening. I think that's the question that we get the most, right. was what about, what about Angela Davis? other people that had that question. Yeah, no, everybody has that question. But Angela Davis was not a member of the Black Panther Party. Um, and, you know, so we decided, you know, as somebody said, you know, part of what, what we have to try to do is cut this thing down and 
make it manageable. As uh, it was very easy for us to say, oh, she was not a member of the party. You know, let's let's not talk about her um, in, in this and film. And Free Angela was out already. Yeah, and Free Angela had was just coming out as we were, you know, in, in the process yeah. of doing our interviews, and so we knew that there was a great film that that had just come out on Angela. The other thing I, I should also say is I, I actually bumped into Angela at a at a at like a little party, and I was like. Listen, we're saying that you weren't a Panther. Is that true? And she said, that is entirely true. I, I sympathize with the party. Our aims were the same, but I was not a member of the Black Panther Party. So I was like, Phew, OK. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and last question, please. Once again, uh, thank you for the film. Thank you for showing us a timeless piece of, of art. Uh, Quick question, do you plan to take this movie on a historically black college tour, just colleges and educate the next generation? <laughs> and the other one, it's about what? 50 people in here. How do we help you get this to the masses? Because everyone here has a cell phone, social media, how do we help you? Oh. I know it's great, excuse me, I know it's great word of mouth because I'm in the media, but this is very necessary because it, it provoked a lot of emotion, but thank you for educating us. Because this is something we need to watch three or four times. This is something we need to pass down for the generation. So tell us right now how we can help you get this to the next level. Okay. Um, the film, wait, someone's coming to the mic. Are you coming, Sonia? Sonia, are, are you coming to the mic, Sonia? Yeah, I just want to make sure you're saying the right thing. Go ahead. What? I just want to make sure you say the hashtag. Yeah, the hashtag. We're so, the hashtag. For right, so we want to make sure folks have, if you talk to folks and tell folks, I mean, literally when Stanley says this thing has been powered by the people, by word of mouth, that's the only way we were able to sell out theater after theater in over 60 cities around the country. It was because people saw it, tweeted in the movie theater, tweeted at the film festivals, and tweeted, you've got to see, hashtag the Black Panther, Black Panthers PBS, you've got to see it. It's that kind of word of mouth that's really going to propel this forward. The film has gone to Ferguson. It's been in communities around the country, but literally at February 16th, when you all tune in and tell your friends and family, we have to amplify that and get that everywhere the film has not yet been seen. But we really need like folks to push it out. So yeah. The, the other, the other thing, thing, thing that you, you could do that, uh, uh, Sonia, Sonia and I work together. So she's just not somebody who just wandered in from the back of the room <laughs> talking crazy. We, we, she, Sonia, Sonia is, is really responsible for getting, getting the film out there. Yeah, we, start, we started out the, our, our theatrical release of the film. We were going to eight cities and we ended up in like 160 different places, including England. They, they, they did 15 cities. I mean, so, you know, and it was all again about people just, you know, you know talking to each other, tweeting, and, and, and stuff like that. So please just, just let people know. Um, the, the other thing you asked about uh, HBCUs, historically black colleges, my brother who's now busy talking over there. So I'm trying to let him know. But anyway, we're, we're, we, we just started a film on historic black colleges and universities, so that's the next film that we're making right now is a film on uh, historically black colleges and kind of their history and in, 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 in their role in, in uh, in American history and changing this country. This is a, it's a really important film. I think you've really put together the why the Black Panthers began and um, eventually why they were eliminated and the forces that we face uh, continually today even and how we're gonna do that. Uh, two years ago, uh, we started at, uh, at the Brooklyn with the, with the Sackler Center, uh, States of Denial, the Illegal Incarceration of Women, Children, and People of Color in response to the mass incarceration policies of the United States. And our spring season is starting on March 13th, and Brian Stevenson, who wrote Just Mercy, is going to be here with Ray Hinton. And it's going to be a great conversation. It's open to the public and free of charge. So I hope you'll be able to come here for that. And Stanley, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everybody. February 16th. Thanks. Oh, I, I had one more thing I, I meant to say. Um, you know, also, if you see the film, you know, a right send, a, send an email something to your local station, WNET here in New York. 
okay? They, and say how much you liked it and how much you want to see stuff like this on. They don't get a lot of those letters and a lot of those calls. They don't. So if they get 100, they're like, oh my God, we got to do more. All right? Thanks again. Right here. Thank you, Steve.